Abra. Lights, anime figurines, noises, sounds, people, good food, and tucked away in a corner of Akihabara is a set of stairs. But not just any stairs, these stairs lead to a lair of retro gaming unlike any I've ever visited anywhere in the world. This is Beep. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. You can get 25% off Windows and Office with coupon code TS25. So they've got Windows 10 Pro, they've got Home, you've got Windows 11, Office 2021, 2019, and 2016. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, and then you'll see everything you've purchased right there. Just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. You know, I never liked how Microsoft has different prices for different people. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokies.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. Welcome to Beep. When I first walked in, I asked one of the employees if it was okay to do photography. And he said, photography is okay, but no videography. So that's why you're seeing photos right now. Beep is not your typical retro store. The Beep, in my opinion, comes from the CMOS beep when you start up a computer. You know, the very satisfying beep when you turn on an old machine. Now the machines that were in this place, I've looked at them many times on the internet, but I've never seen them in person. So I was kind of in shock and awe. There were some CRT monitors glowing in the back and I saw Mario Brothers and a few other games. I saw the X68000 from Sharp and I was immediately so jealous. The X68000 was a personal computer, but it was more of a gaming computer. I believe the top resolution on that was 10, 1280 by 1024. And it was sold kind of as an all-in-one kit. You could the Sharp monitor the, the X68000 unit itself, which is really cool looking. And they came in beige, but they also had this really pretty black model, which I would love to take and modify into a maybe a modern PC, but also give it the VGA output so you can play all the retro games on it. That would be really, really cool. Anyway, there you can see it with the monitor. And this thing was a gaming beast and it also had a really good sound chip. This is the main thing that I was jealous of because you could play some DOS games that look like this. I mean, maybe this was a little more powerful than a lot of the DOS machines out at the time, but this had the Yamaha YM2151 sound chip and it just sounds so good. It was also a PCM sound generator, the Sony uh, SPC700. Now that sound chip made some really good music. So that's the X68000. Uh, it ran its own operating system, similar to DOS, very, very similar to DOS. I'm not sure if it's compatible with DOS or not, but it was only released in Japan, so all the games for that, you'll need to at least know a little bit of Japanese to be able to navigate through them. The shoot 'em ups and some of the side-scrolling games, just get into the game, play them, it's fun, stuff's happening, there's, there's Japanese letters on the screen, hiragana, katakana, whatever, but you can still have fun and enjoy the games for what they are. The thing about the system, it has a lot of games that were visual novels, so this is like, the visual novels kind of started on the PC-88, uh, the PC-98, they really got big, I guess, there. Uh, but we also had a lot of them here. And there's a lot of Arogi games as well, a lot of hentai games. I mean, they're very mature stories with really interesting soundtracks. Some of the best soundtracks period came from this machine and also the PC-98, uh, written by Ryu Umamoto for Seize Lab. And that, that was the company that was producing a lot of these Arogi games back in the day. So I was really excited to see the X68000 in person. It was like one of those experiences where like, whoa, there it is. And then beside that, they did have a few of the uh, PC-98 uh, PC-9801 boxes from NEC, which are another computer. It came before that, but another computer that was only released in Japan. So I feel like we we should have gotten that NEC and we should have gotten that Sharp. They would have been gaming beasts, but and so many games were made from them. They were also really, really capable personal computers. It's really interesting. The PC-98 used their own system called PC-98 DOS. So it's said to be a proprietary system. I'm not sure how similar to DOS it is because I, I haven't tried it out myself other than just messing around with some of the Project Neko, that's the emulator. Um, but if you want to check it out, check out Pro Project Neko right now. You can try some of the games. Now, the PC-98 was also really popular in business environments. So though it had a ton of games, I wonder if anybody was playing those Arogi games in their in their cubicles. They were working long hours, uh, just hanging out, playing way, w games after hours. Maybe, who knows? Now, there were some RPGs there. 
Like it was kind of interesting. You turn around and then there's just like stuff everywhere. By the way, if you go, just know there is going to be hentai and it's not going to be behind any walls or anything. They're not prudes about that kind of stuff there. There is some weird hentai that I makes me unsettled and that you see that almost anywhere you go, which is kind of strange. But yes, there's there's hentai everywhere. You'll see nudity, uh, you know, out in the open on the shelves. Uh, you'll see topless people. You'll see like censored stuff. It's there. It's everywhere. If you're going to go and do anything nerdy, any otaku stuff, there's going to be nudity, just so you know when you're in Japan. And you'll see kids, very young kids, with their parents walking around, and there'll be just like boobs everywhere. And they just kind of walk through it and look around and do stuff. It's It doesn't seem to be like, I don't know, no one seems to make a big deal out of it. So I didn't make a big deal out of it either. In fact, I don't, I don't really mind hentai. It's cool. It's whatever. It's great. Good. It's good. Tickles the brain. So just know when you go in there, you're going to see a lot of the hentai and stuff. All right, so we've seen a lot of that. There's also tons of computer games and Atari games. It's just, as you walk around, you're gonna see stuff here that you're not gonna see in other places. And that's because they have that focus on like the retro computer games, but they also do have the Super Famicom stuff and the NEC PC Engine stuff and just all kinds of stuff from different systems. Some of it I've never seen before. They had Sega Saturn games for just like three or $4. Um, they had some amazing, amazing boxes, like this box here from, I believe that's from Night Warriors or Dark, Dark Stalkers. I, I'm not sure they had a little thing over it, but that was a be beautiful box art there. And then they had a whole section filled with the Game & Watches, which I hadn't played with one of those before. And if you're not familiar with the Game & Watch, they're kind of significant because that's where the D-pad really came from. It started with the Game & Watch, like having the four buttons on one side and the other buttons on the other side to play the games. And they were these tiny little handheld systems that Nintendo was making before they made an entertainment system. Or as they called it over there, a family computer. It's really interesting to see that that piece of history, Donkey Kong and stuff on the Game & Watch. I'm gonna keep like just going through some of these pictures on the screen. I guess I could talk in the background, but you know, I, I wish I was able to like, like I said, do video here, cause it's really crazy. It's not a huge place, pretty small. And when you get to the back, you have like parallel cables and VGA cables and just all kinds of different cables and stuff you can grab. So I showed you a bunch of pictures. I rattled on for just a little bit. It's a tiny little place, but just the amount of stuff that they have, the fact that they still have so many big box games, the prices are ridiculously low. If you even compared it to like eBay in the USA, the prices are significantly lower than it would be to buy like those games on eBay and have them shift, uh, especially when it comes to the, the big box games. The Super Famicom games were also significantly cheaper. And when you compare this to something like Super Potato, which I know a lot of people go to and they've got really cool, really cool selection of games. I found this had a much better selection of the PC games, the X68000 games, PC98 games from NEC, and also just like the old, you know, PC games, or DOS games and whatever else, old Windows games. They had a much bigger selection of that, so I, I really enjoyed that. They had way more CRTs. Uh, you can browse around and look at those. They had a, a tabletop RPG section, which was cool. They had some accessories, but mostly like the whole experience is awesome, and the prices are much lower when compared to Super Potato. So what did I get at Beep? Well, I'm gonna make a second video and I'll unbox some of the things that I got. I got a couple of Super Famicom games, I got some old PC games that have ridiculously cool box art. Uh, by the way, the box art for the Japanese versions of games is not the same as the box art for most of the American versions. Uh, the, Japan, they're way, they're way more okay with the gratuitous stuff, if you know what I mean. So I got some ridiculous box arts that are unlike the American versions. And, and I'll do a little unboxing video or a little video where I go through all the stuff I grabbed at Beep. I was able to, ended up getting a bunch of stuff and I, I felt bad the first day because I was like, there was a bunch of stuff there I wanted. And then I looked up prices online and I was like, okay, even if I change my mind, I, just even taking these things back to America and selling them, I'll make all my money back plus five times more. So I was like, screw it. And I went back and got more stuff at Beep on a different day. If you're in Tokyo and you have time to go to Akihabara, just put this into your maps, look for those stairs and descend into beautiful madness that is beep. Now, if you want to see what I got, I will be doing that video and it won't be on this channel. I'm going to put it on a different channel. There's a, a link in the description. I started a new channel called Easy Mode, and that's mostly for gaming and hanging out. It's supposed to be just like very chill, where we can talk about some retro goodness and just kind of take it easy, I guess. And now we also have a, a new website. It's a social platform I set up. So this is Easy Mode that I am. And I set this up to be a very cool platform for people who are into games, tabletop, retro stuff, anime, just, you know, like cool bits of nerd culture. You can talk about whatever you like on here. Of course, no bigotry, just have fun. But mostly I set this up to be somewhere where also people who are working on games, game devs and stuff, and have a little home online and you can, you can follow anybody on Mastodon. Like you can see here, this person, 
they're on Mastodon. So if you click on their page and then click on View Remote Instance, it'll be like it'll take you over to Mastodon, and then you'll have to enable your <laughs> JavaScript. And you can see, hey, they're on Mastodon, but I'm still able to follow them here very easily on easy mode. Now come over here and set up an account and then I'll show you um, if you wanna like, and you can build your own like UI, set it up. See, I've even titled this some, something stupid. I usually just use the simple UI. So that's it. If you want a less toxic place to hang out than, than Twitter, head over to easymode.im, join us up. Be cool, because if you're not, I will throw you right out. That's And that's a should be a, a bonus to the people who are there. Just know that if someone's a jackass or a bigot or, or garbage people, I'll throw them out. So, I mean, if you're a garbage person, and as in like you pick up garbage, that's fine, you, you can join. Anyway, I'll see you there, and then look for the other video on easy mode on YouTube. It's just youtube.com slash add easy mode. That's enough stuff, goodbye.